fluid examination. Small amounts of serous fluid lies between the serous membrane lining the body cavities and those covering the organs within the cavities. It is an ultrafiltrate of the plasma derived from surrounding capillaries. It is continuously produced depending on the capillary hydrostatic pressure, plasma oncotic pressure and capillary permeability. There is also continuous reabsorption of the fluid through surrounding lymphatics and venules. An excess accumulation of this fluid is called effusion, which results from an imbalance of production and reabsorption. Examples of these fluids sent to the lab for examination are peritoneal fluid or ascitic fluid, pleural fluid or thoracic fluid, pericardial fluid and synovial fluid from joints, cerebrospinal fluid. We will first discuss the general handling for all body fluids followed by testing and interpretation of specific body fluids. Body fluid examination. The aim of testing the serous body fluids is to reach a diagnosis by differentiating transudates from exudates. It helps us to understand if the underlying cause is systemic or localized. The criteria vary for each type of serous fluid. It also helps to differentiate inflammatory from non-inflammatory causes like malignancies to identify specific causes like tubercular etiology. Fluid examination includes routine examination and special examinations. The routine examination includes gross examination, cell counts, biochemical examination, culture, gram stain and cytology. The special examination is defined by clinical picture and provisional diagnosis. All the samples should be received in the laboratory in appropriate containers with the test requisition form giving history and provisional clinical diagnosis. When the fluid sample is received in the laboratory, it needs to be sent to different departments for testing. The hematology department for total and differential cell count. The sample here is collected in EDTA tube. Biochemistry examination for glucose, protein, lactate levels, etc. Sample is collected in plain tube or heparin tubes. Microbiology department for culture and gram staining. Sample is collected in a sterile container or culture bottle. Ideally, it should be directly inoculated at bedside into the blood culture bottle. Clinical pathology department for cytology. The sample is collected in plain tube or heparin tubes. Sometimes, the sample may be sent to the laboratory in a syringe. In that case, distribute the sample into required tubes depending upon the volume. In case the volume of the sample is less, it can be accepted in a single container and test should be carried out by different departments using the same sample container. First, inoculate culture plates, do biochemistry test, followed by cell counts. Then centrifuge the sample and do cytology. Sample collection. All samples are collected under sterile conditions by an experienced doctor. Plural fluid is collected by thoracocentesis for diagnostic and therapeutic purposes. Peritoneal fluid or ascitic fluid is collected through paracentesis for diagnostic and therapeutic purposes. Pericardial fluid samples are collected by pericardiocentesis. Synovial fluid is collected by arthrocentesis. Cerebrospinal fluid collected by lumbar puncture, which is discussed separately. Gross examination includes volume of the fluid, 
which should be recorded when received in the laboratory. Color of the fluid. Place the fluid in a clear glass tube and look against a white background. Note down the color of the fluid. Clarity. It can be assessed by placing the tube with fluid against a newsprint. The fluid can be described as clear, turbid, hazy or cloudy. It can further be quantified as mild, moderate or marked. Presence or absence of coagulum. Cloudy or purulent fluid is most often associated with an inflammatory process. Hemorrhagic fluid might indicate a traumatic tap, malignant neoplasm, infarction or trauma. A chylus fluid will appear turbid or milky even after centrifugation. Pseudochylus effusions may be milky or greenish and have a sparkly sheen from the accumulation of cholesterol crystals. Conversely, when the fluid is clear to straw coloured, further workup may be unnecessary unless chemical examination indicates an exutative process. Biochemical investigations usually include total protein levels, glucose, lactate and enzymes like lactate dehydrogenase, adenosine deaminase, amylase, etc. The parameters requested will depend on the type of fluid and provisional clinical diagnosis. Note, if the sample is very turbid or cloudy, centrifuge the sample and then test using the supernatant. These biochemistry investigations are as per the analyte described in the biochemistry section and can be run on semi-automated or fully automated biochemistry analyzers. All kit inserts should be checked before deciding to use the method for analysis. For instance, proteins in some fluids like cerebrospinal fluid are in very small quantities and require specialized reagents and special calibrators for microprotein assessment. Manual tests like sulfur salicylic acid are semi-quantitative and not standardized to specify the protein levels in fluid. Hence, it is important that the lab assess the best method option possible for the equipment they have. Also, the specified sample collection procedure should be followed, especially with reference to the container for collection. If the investigations are not available in your lab, you must understand the storage and transportation requirements well. These may vary as per analyte and method of examination. This can be understood from the referral lab. For example, in the case of LDH, it is better not to refrigerate or freeze specimen, but to hold it at room temperature at 15 to 25 degrees centigrade. Serum should be separated from clot within one hour to minimize hemolysis. Also, please note that most biochemical parameters are reported with reference to the corresponding serum values for clinical decisions made of those parameters. For example, serum protein versus plural fluid protein, serum amylase against acytic fluid amylase, plural fluid and serum LDH ratio, serum ascites albumin gradient etc. Therefore, it is important to analyze the serum parameters simultaneously. These points are dealt in detail later in the section. Cell counts. Cell counts should be performed promptly within four hours of collection as the cells begin to degenerate. Counts are usually performed manually using new bar chamber. If the fluid is clear and low cell count is suspected, do not dilute and do a direct count. If the fluid is turbid or hemorrhagic and a high cell count is suspected, the cell count is done after appropriate dilution with saline. Automated cell counter may also be used for high cell counts, 
But it is important to remember that the aperture of the machine can get clogged and it could result in falsely high counts due to non-leukocyte content like crystals, fat globules or mesothelial cells. Cytological examination The fluid is processed to prepare smears for microscopic examination of types of cells and background material. The fluid received is stirred briskly to disperse the suspended cells. If fibrin clot has already formed, the clot may be smashed against the sides of the tube to free the trapped cells. Centrifugation A representative volume of the fluid, preferably 10 to 15 ml, is usually centrifuged at 2000 rotations per minute for 10 minutes in a calibrated centrifuge. Smears are then prepared from these deposits for cytological examination and gram staining. Cytocentrifuge can also be used, which concentrates small number of cells suspended in fluid specimen at 2000 rotation per minute for 2 minutes. It sediments cells directly onto slides. The filter card simultaneously absorbs the fluid medium. The result is a monolayer of well-preserved cells. All the prepared slides should be fixed adequately in ethanol or methanol or using spray fixation. Ethanol fixation is wet fixation and is done by immediately immersing the prepared slides into ethanol in Copeland jars. Some stains like MGG, the slide may be air dried and later wet fixed in methyl alcohol for 15 to 20 minutes during the staining process. Alternatively, spray fixation can be done using cytosprays. Please refer to the pap smear videos for detailed understanding of cytosprays. The smears are then stained using Jimsa, Leishman, MGG or pap stain for microscopic examination. Microbiological investigations Culture and sensitivity. Ideally, the sample should be inoculated into the culture bottle at the bedside. If not possible, it should be processed in the microbiology department in the lab. Staining of centrifuge deposit for gram stain and acid fast bacilli is then carried out. Special test. These tests are done for specific conditions if indicated clinically. They include immunological tests and tumor marker studies.